Hi guys, welcome to Traveller's Tales by <clears throat> Hanko Chan. Tragically, the body of the missing hiker, Mr. Harry Tan, has been found. Channel News Asia, CNA as usual, ran a rather confusing article trying to explain what happened through the eyes of observers on the ground. Well, let's take a look at this part. What happened at Everest Base Camp? Well, nothing happened at Everest Base Camp actually. I thought they have already figured out that Mr. Tan was at Kongmala and not Everest Base Camp. Now, this is what the article says. After Mr. Tan disappeared last Thursday, Andrew, not his real name, who does not know him personally, received a message from his friend who was also at Everest Base Camp at about 7.40pm Singapore time. Andrew's friend, who is not Singaporean, told him that a Singaporean man had gone missing and asked if he could help to reach the man's friends and family back home. Now, can you believe that? <laughs> Andrew, not his real name, doesn't know the victim, received a message from his friend, friend not a Singaporean. <laughs> Please, CNA, leave this part out or tell it at the end as a source of the information after you have managed to tell a coherent story. You're confusing the reader at the very beginning. Now, according to Andrew, his friend and her companions had tried to seek help from the Nepalese police, but were told that the authorities could not do anything. Now, that's not surprising. They then asked the owner of the lodge they were staying at for help and were told that they would have to provide insurance details before rescue efforts with a helicopter could begin. Also not surprising, that's because somebody has to pay for the helicopter. But they did not mention the location of the lodge. Was it at Gorakshep, Lobuche? Well, who knows? Armed with Mr. Tan's name, age, occupation and picture, Andrew put out a call to some friends in the sports scene on Thursday night and managed to reach his family about three hours later. Now, he also informed the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the incident. Mr. Tan's family shared his insurance details with the team in Nepal by Friday, but bad weather hampered rescue efforts. Andrew said that there was a snowstorm, so there was no way any kind of rescue mission could actually take place. They tried to go out on foot, but it was just too treacherous, so they couldn't do anything. The lodge owner said this is the worst snowstorm they've ever experienced. After days of bad weather, the skies cleared up on Tuesday and the rescue mission officially began. Now note that there was no mention of freak weather conditions in all the previous reports. Kongmala is such an open area. It would have been very easy to spot Mr. Tan, who was supposed to be hiking with two friends. Andrew and his former student confirmed that. How would Andrew know that if he doesn't know Mr. Tan? Now, it gets even weirder. Andrew told CNA, quote, I do not know the reason, but he decided that he wanted to go ahead first. And that's how he caught up with the Chinese group. One of them was my friend. Uh, so Mr. Tan left his two friends at the lodge, went off alone and caught up with the Chinese group. He learned about that from one member of the Chinese group who happened to be his friend. Now, according to Andrew's friend, another person in her hiking party witnessed Mr. Tan falling. Is this female friend the same one he mentioned or is she the same person in the Chinese group that he knows? Not mentioned. They last saw him at about 12.40 p.m. Nepal time on Thursday. Mr. Tan appeared to be alone and without Sherpas, he added. Another man who was with the same hiking group walked down to see if he could help. He also asked his Sherpa guide for assistance but was refused. 
the likelihood is that the Sherpa is just trying to protect himself. He doesn't want to be liable for any casualties. He's liable for his own customers, in a sense. Andrew noted. Now, days later, other people who heard about the incident sent in photos and videos they had taken with Mr. Tan while he was hiking alone. Mr. Tan was at least two to three hours ahead of his two friends when he met Andrew's friend and her companions. His friends, who are safe, did not make it past Kongmala Pass because of the bad weather, Andrew added. That's a lot to unravel and decode. Is this hiking group that witnessed Mr. Tan falling and getting injured the same as the so-called Chinese group that he caught up with? Never mind. So the weather was bad. The group couldn't cross the pass, presumably from Chukung to Lobache, and they left the injured man alone. A search and rescue were not underway as initially reported. Mr. Tan has been out in the open at 5,000 meters from 26 September to 1st October. But the strangest part is no information is coming from the two friends. He seemed to have abandoned at the lodge. Were they still at the lodge, presumably at Chukung, when Mr. Tan was injured? What about the group that witnessed the accident and turned back? they would have had to return to Chukung. Did they get in touch with Mr. Tan's two friends? There are too many questions unanswered. And if it's my family, I can't see any closure. We will probably never know the whole truth unless the police in Kathmandu can track down witnesses and interview them. There has been a spate of accidents involving Singaporean adventurers recently. Now, many of the newbies just starting out could be seniors like me, except that I have been trekking in the Himalayas for 30 years. Now, even though I'm familiar with some of the routes which I've done before, I will never go without a guide. Like what I said in a video on Gunung Agung, your guide is your best insurance policy. I give up my bragging rights. That's all I have for you, for you in this video. Hopefully, more information can come out in the coming days. See you then.